In Season 18, I put out an amazing Arc Titan build for GMs that let you one-shot every single champion with no exceptions. There was no build-up, no major buff stacking, and no min-maxing your gameplay either. We used this to speedrun the disgraced GM and literally just ran up and aped champions with shoulder charge and a shotgun. With the updates to mods in Lightfall, I wanted to remake that build so it could be used again this season since we ended up losing a bunch of mods that were used in the previous build and gained some new ones to make things better as well. We're going to be stacking our damage up to deal almost 26x our base melee in some cases, but it's super easy to do so. Our shoulder charge at base is going to hit something like 46,000 damage, then adding in Syntoseps, which auto proc, we don't really need to do anything, gives us a 200% increase up to 138,000 damage, and then adding in one two punch with this combo is another 200% increase, so we should now hit for 416k. And then finally, if you did want to add in Tractor Cannon, that would be a 30% debuff, bringing us up to half a million damage in total. This stacking as is won't equal the full 26x increase. To actually get up this high, you will need to use Spark of Feedback. However, Spark of Feedback is extremely hard to use because you don't know when it's fully procced and it lasts for a short duration. And then on top of this, in some of the testing I did in previous seasons, it didn't always stack, but Feedback would be another 75% increase. Even without that stacking, everything else is going to easily allow you to one-shot champions depending on your power level and the activity surges, or just consistently two-hit champions after they've been stunned. I'm going to be going over how to use this build effectively towards the end of the video, so make sure to stick around for that, along with the subclass layout, mods, and more. And with that said, let's hop into the build right now. All right, first things first, if you guys aren't subbed already, make sure to drop a like and a sub down below because it's free. That said, for our super, we are on Thunder Crash. We just want this for quick burst damage that we can get off. We don't really want to be using a roaming super with this build, so T Crash is perfect. Depending on the activity, you might want something like a barricade. That being said, I tend to stay on Thruster so I can spam it for ability cooldown. For our melee, Seismic Strike or Shoulder Charge is going to allow us to get the most damage possible out of any single melee compared to the other options we have. And then with this, we're also blinding in a large AoE when our melee goes off, which allows us to instantly proc unstop champions. And then last up for our main abilities, Pulse Grenade is going to be best in my opinion, so that we can throw this down and instantly stun Overload Champions when Jolt gets applied. Plus, we get ability energy back through the Ionic Traces these are making. For our first aspect, we do have Touch of Thunder. This is mainly so that we get the extra fragment slots, because this is a melee build, not really a grenade build. But that said, with Pulse Grenades, this allows them to now create Ionic Traces, and they're dealing increasing damage over time. Obviously, more important to this build, since it is melee base, is going to be the aspect Knockout. With this, critically wounding or breaking an enemy's shields is going to give us increased melee damage, and then make every melee kill after that point start health regeneration for us. For our base melee punches, which we use a ton for general ad clear, that's going to be a 60% increase. And then for all charged melees, that's going to be a 25% increase, which will scale with everything else we're stacking in the build. Fragment-wise, Spark of Recharge is going to be used to generate our melee and grenades much quicker anytime we are critically wounded, which will happen a lot with this build as our health fluctuates up and down often. Spark of Recharge is going to give our grenades jolt. That is going to allow us to now stun overload champions and just increase the overall damage of each nade. With Spark of Feedback, anytime we take melee damage from an enemy, we get 5 seconds of increased melee damage ourselves. This increase is something like 75%. You could sub this out for the build because in my opinion, this doesn't seem to always stack, and the cooldown plus the amount of buffs on our screen on the left hand side make it hard to know when this is applying. Finally, with Spark of Resistance, anytime we're surrounded by combatants, we get 25% damage resistance from all sources, and it lingers for 2 seconds, making this build much better for endgame content. Our exotic of choice that you want to make sure you're running with this build is going to be Syntoseps. With these, anytime we're surrounded by 3 or more combatants, within 15 meters, we're going to get a 10 or 8 second lingering effect, which increases our melee damage for our base melee and our charge melee by 200%, and this also increases our super damage by 50% as well. All the mods for the build are on screen now, so if you guys want to pause the video and apply them yourself, or just take a screenshot and follow along as I cover each mod, you can do that now. On my helmet, the first major mod for the build is going to be Hands On, which gives increased super energy gains through melee kills. Since it's a melee build and we're getting a ton of melee kills, this helps build our super very quickly. I'm running Forbearance with this build, so I also chose to run Arc Siphon. This just decreases the downtime for when we're waiting for our melee to come back, since we can spawn more orbs of power and get cooldown for abilities through picking them up. 
Heavy Handed pretty much does the same thing, except we're generating orbs of power on melee final blows. This doesn't need to be a charge melee, it can be any base melee, and it does have a cooldown. Since we're picking up orbs and getting armor charge stacks, I did also put on double melee kickstart. This allows us to get a large chunk of our melee straight back anytime we use it, which means we never have to build more than around 50% of our melee from base. I say this in a lot of builds just to help drive the point so people understand how you should be playing end game content more efficiently. For your chest piece, you just want to make sure that you have damage resistance sources on. If you did want to opt for something like charged up to increase your max armor charge stack so that you can dip into melee kickstart much more, then that's fine. You can do that. Just make sure to keep around two of these mods on depending on the activity you're in and make sure they obviously match the source of damage you're taking the most. Moving on to my boots, I do have on one copy of Invigoration so that anytime I pick up an Orb of Power, I'm getting melee energy back. And with that, I also have on Recuperation. So instead of melee energy for this mod, we're just getting chunks of healing. Lastly, for my boots, I am running stacks on stacks. This is going to double the armor charge stacks that I get anytime I pick up an Orb of Power from 1 to 2. So this just allows my melee kickstart to always consume 2 or more charges so we get more energy back each time. I mentioned I was spamming Thruster with the build, and the reason for that is because we have on double outreach, so anytime we use our class ability, we get energy for our melee straight back. And then finally with the build, I do have on one copy of the mod Reaper. Anytime I use my class ability and then get a weapon final blow, that will also drop an orb of power, which combines with Arc Siphon when using Forbearance, and then I pick those up and, as you saw, get more energy back. Just as a full build recap, make sure that you are running the exact same striker subclass layout that I have for Arc Titan. Make sure everything looks the exact same here. And then with that, make sure your mods are the exact same and that you are running synth steps with the build for that 200% increase in melee damage. And then after that, all you're really going to need is a shotgun with one two punch. And then obviously, I'm also pairing this with tractor cannon. And that's it. Just to quickly show off the build, anytime you enter a new activity or anything like this lost sector, you're going to have zero armor charge stacks. So your first goal is to build those up and then after i use my melee ability for a kill to get my first two charges you're gonna see that i need my melee back so i can use things like my grenade and my class ability to use ionic traces and just get energy back through our outreach mods with seismic strike back i can quickly clear out a large group of ads like this they're gonna all die through the chain lightning and the chain blinding and then i'm gonna work towards getting my next melee just by punching ads at this point, you're going to see that I also have Biotic Enhancements proc, so I'm getting that 200% increase in melee damage. Then I can just slide in, proc 1, 2, punch, and melee, just like that, through a charged melee keybind, which you should obviously have on with the build, to make things much easier. You're also going to see here, anytime I take damage and then get a melee kill right after, I get a ton of healing just through knockout. So that's going to help keep me alive constantly. The only time it's going to be hard proc is when Biotic Enhancements goes down and we're not really surrounded by enemies. I'm going to get my super really quickly here after killing a few adds, and then after that I'm going to use it and show you how much energy we can get back just through melee kills alone because we do have the mod hands on. So just like that, I have my super. I'm going to use my super back here, and we have a large group of adds coming up. I'm going to do something like that, and then spam punch. We are building a ton of super energy just through killing red bars too. Red bars give you the least amount of super energy to my knowledge. I think the tier of the enemy does increase the super energy gains that you get. So just like that, punching one room of adds, we got our super halfway back. Hopping back into the Legend Lost sector of the day, I wanted to show how you can take out a champion, in this case an unstop, even when you don't have your shoulder charge procced, because the build is typically known for one or two shotting enemies, but here we have to use our blind to stun, but then I can just tractor one two punch, one two punch. Because Biotic Enhancements gets procced, I can instantly take them out and stay alive through things like Knockout. As you saw, this build is super, super strong at taking out champs when under power. Obviously, you do want to go into activities if you can that have a threat or a surge that gives you a 25% increase in your arc damage, because that's going to allow you to one or two shot champions much easier. But even if you don't have that, it can still be done. Let me know your thoughts on the build in the comments below, along with which class you think is currently the strongest with steamroll builds like this one heading into GMs. I do also stream a ton over on Twitch where we just got partnered. If you want to see us doing some Root of Nightmare speedruns, we'll be live this Wednesday and over the weekend. Anyways, that's it for this video. As always, have a good one, guys. Peace.